Hey guys, in this month's Historical Fiction 101, I'm going to be sharing with you some unique book covers. So, I believe quite a number of years ago, when I first started up this uh, Historical Fiction 101 uh, series, I, I believe I did do a, a video just talking about historical fiction covers, um, because the, the historical fiction genre, a lot of times you know fairly immediately if, if it is a historical fiction book. You can always kind of tell from the cover. There's always a lot of telltale signs, if you will, when it comes to the genre. Um, the thing is, though, a lot of covers in the historical fiction genre, as much as I love the genre, you guys, a lot of times covers are, are very predictable, they're not very creative. So that's what this video is. I, I kind of just was looking at all my book covers and I was just looking at covers that really kind of stood out to me and that I thought were were unique and kind of different for the genre. And like covers that really expressed something about the book, whether that's something about the characters or a theme perhaps, or yeah, just a cover that's just different and cool, you know? Um, because, yeah, a, a popular cover, when it comes to the historical fiction genre, a very popular cliché cover, it, it, it there's always the ones that have, like, a woman on the cover, and you either do see the front of her, but, like, she's cut off from, like, the head up, and you can't see, like, the face, so you get, like, the neck down. Or you get, like, a profile shot of the woman, but you still can't see her face. You get, like, everything, but you can't you still kind of can't see her face that good. Or you have the shot of, like, a woman, um, and you just see the entire backside of her with some sort of landscape, you know, that she's looking at. So yeah, that's what I kind of mean by very cliche covers. There's usually a woman with no head, a woman that you can only see in profile, or a woman where you only see from her from the back. It, it It's not very creative and it's rather predictable when it comes to the genre. So yeah, these, these covers in particular, I just kind of thought were like, oh, these are kind of cool, you know, looking at them, I really like them. I don't know about you guys, you may not see anything special in these covers, but yeah, I'm just going to kind of go through these covers and explain, I guess in better detail, what I mean. <laughs> First up is actually a duology, and this is uh, The Winds of War and War and Remembrance by uh, Herman Woke. And what I like about these two covers in per particular, because um, this is the editions that I own, um, if you put these book covers together, they form like an image of like someone's, um, like their bookshelf and all of these family photos and whatnot. And yeah, what you need to know about The Winds of War and War and Remembrance by Herman Woke, this is essentially like a big family saga, a big epic, and it goes through the entirety of World War II focusing on this family um, and their experiences during the war um, because yeah there's there's characters who are witnessing the war out in the Pacific there's characters witnessing the war in America there's characters witnessing the war in Europe especially uh, like the Holocaust and whatnot so this book is covering a lot of the big uh, events and topics of World War II through this this family because you do you have like the matriarch and the patriarch of the family and then their children and the people that they're married to and yeah any friends that they kind of have or that they're associated with so I really love um, War and Remembrance of the Winds of War I just really love the story and yeah what I love about this edition like I said if you put the covers side by side they form like this bookshelf in of the family photos and whatnot um, I think this just really speaks to what this story is about. You see all these photos of a, of a family, and you can tell they're all, you know, in like the 40s, you know, like 30s, 40s kind of outfits and whatnot. Um, and it does, it gives you that great sense of, okay, this is what to expect when you're reading this series. You are going to be expecting a family saga during World War II, essentially. So yeah, I, I just really like this, this edition, these editions and how they kind of do that. Next up, a unique cover, uh, The 13th Tale by Diane Setterfield. And all that's on this cover is just a pile 
of books, old books if you will. And what I like about this cover, what was kind of really speaking to me, because I could, I could look at it, because these are old fashioned looking books, I was like okay this is definitely historical fiction and it has something to do with with books and literature perhaps. So yeah, lo and behold when I read the synopsis, uh, this book definitely has something to kind of do with that. Um, so yeah, what you need to know about The Thirteenth Tale by Diane Satterfield, um, it follows a, a woman who's like a biographer and she is um, going to write the biography of, of like a, a really famous writer who wrote like um, like a bunch of really popular stories and whatnot but this this popular writer has has always been rather reclusive and, and a lot of people don't know anything about like her life story and her history and what, whatnot so yeah this biographer it's her job to tell this life story of this rather reclusive author and yeah this takes the author you know back in time to her childhood and re retelling her childhood and um is she making things up? Is she making taking some liberties with her own history? You know, what's fact and fiction? Um, so yeah, I've always loved The Thirteenth Tale. It definitely has this really gothic atmosphere and vibe to it. And I really feel like this book cover kind of captures that with this old pile of books and whatnot. I and mean, there is something almost kind of mildly creepy about it. <laughs> Next up, Labyrinth by Kate Moss. And uh, I just I just kind of really liked this cover. When I first saw this book on shelves, I was like, oh, this is kind of interesting. Um, what's what's this mysterious symbol? You know, it, it looks like a labyrinth, but is that what it means, you know? So yeah, what you need to know about Labyrinth by Kate Moss. Um, this is a book, um, some of the story takes place in 2005, like a contemporary setting. And then there's also historical fiction settings thrown in there as well. And the whole book takes place in France. Um, so yeah, you're following um, a young woman named Alice who is on a arche archaeological dig and she stumbles into a cave um, and she discovers like some skeletons and some strange writing on some walls and yeah this pattern of the labyrinth that you see on the cover of this book. And then yeah the historical fiction, fiction setting you go back to 1209, the year 1209 and um, you meet a young woman named Alais, um, and she is given a, a mysterious ring and a book by her father. So she needs to safe keep it um, as he goes off to fight in the Crusades. And what you quickly find out with this book, especially in the historical fiction setting, um, there's like this big hunt and quest for the Holy Grail. Um, and then, yeah, that also ties into the contemporary setting. Once our heroine in that setting kind of figures things out too, and it's like, okay, there's there's some bad people after the Holy Grail. Um, so yeah, I, I've always really liked this cover for Labyrinth because the Labyrinth, the symbol of it on the cover, is a huge deal even within the story. Um, it, it it's you know it's kind of like a key to things. Um, so yeah, the cover is definitely perfect for this book. Um, because of the symbology right there on the front. Next up, The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. The particular edition I'm talking about is the one um, with the finger pointing at the, the dice and whatnot, and the dice are about to like be knocked over. Um, what I love about The Book Thief cover, because this book is considered like a children's young adult book, and if you've browsed through the young adult section, you'll quickly realize that a lot of the young adult book covers, they're not very creative. A lot of them look the exact same, like the same artist is making all of the same freaking covers. So what I like about The Book Thief, this cover, there's, there's nothing particularly about it that really kind of stands out to you. There's nothing really flashy about it. But once you read the book, the cover makes sense. Um, because I think I used to look at the book and I used to think, okay, what's up with these, 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 uh, dominoes? You know, what's up with these domino dominoes? Why, why is it on this cover? There is a section in the book where one of the characters, he is playing dominoes at some point. Um, so yeah, there, not only is our character playing dominoes at some point, but there's also just the symbolism of these dominoes. I think because what you need to know about the book thief, the book thief, book thief, if you don't know, takes place in Germany in World War II, following everyday Germans, following a little girl who's been adopted by this older couple, and she loves to read and write, and they're also housing a, 
a Jewish man in their house and whatnot illegally. So what I love about this cover, the dominoes, to me, they're, they're, they're a great symbol of, of the war in some ways. Um, because World War II was such a chaotic event and whatnot. And dominoes, when you, when you push over dominoes, you create chaos, essentially. They're all falling down and they're all hitting into the next, you know, next domino, you know, and that way you have a perfect, you know, whatever, whatever you're making with the dominoes, you know, it all falls perfectly, essentially. That's what you're trying to achieve. And I just think the dominoes are a great symbol of, of World War II for some reason, just that, that controlled chaos if you will, if that makes sense. Um, and plus, like I said, there is a character playing dominoes at some point in this book during kind of a, a little bit of a pivotal, pivotal moment when there's like a conversation going on. So yeah, I've always really liked this cover. It's like you really got to kind of dig into it a bit more, like the, just the symbolism of the dominoes and what that kind of means and how you can kind of connect that to war, I suppose. Next up, The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern. And this is just a beautiful cover, you guys. I kind of put it on this list just because it's such a beautiful cover. Um, uh, the colors really sp just spoke to me when I first saw this this book. I was like, ooh, the black, the white, we got some pink in there, and we got the silhouette of this man and woman, and then you got the, the circus tent right there in the middle. This is just a really great cover that's really eye-drawing and eye-capturing and whatnot, and it does, it makes you interested to pick it up. Um, and read what the synopsis is about. And yeah, the, the title alone lets you know this has something to do with a circus. Uh, the silhouette of the man and woman lets you know immediately has something to do with historical fiction. Um, and there's, there's something, just the color scheme in general lets you, it gives you kind of this whimsical feel. You know, it really gives you this whimsical feel that there's something magical. Um, and yeah, that's exactly what this book is about. It's about a night circus. It's about a circus that only appears at night. And the whole book, we follow two rival magicians, a, a young girl and a young guy, um, as they're, they're competing against each other um, with their with their magic and whatnot. And yeah, there's a circus going on and everything. Um, magical circus. Um, and I, I do. This cover has always just really grabbed my attention. It's a beautiful cover. Um, and, and it does, it, it, it lets you know immediately, hey, this is a historical fiction fantasy type of book, I feel like. Next up, Outlander by Diana Cabaldon. This is just a very simplistic cover, you guys, and all of the books in Outlander are like this. They're just simplistic, they're, they just, they, it's like, hey, look at me, you know, what, what the, what's this symbol on here, you know? Um, uh, Outlander is about a, a woman. She lives in the 1940s. She was a nurse during the war. She's going on a second honeymoon with her husband in Scotland. And it's here that she goes to some standing stones that are kind of calling out to her for some mysterious reason. She touches the stones and she's just transported back in time to like the 1700s. Um, in Scotland when it's a pretty tumultuous time period in Scotland. And it's here she meets a, a really hot Scotsman named Jamie and whatnot. Um, so yeah, that's what you gotta know about Outlander. Taking place in the 40s initially, but then yeah, time traveling. Some time travel, you know. Um, uh, I, these covers, it, at first it's kind of like, oh, these are kind of kind of stupid, you know. But at the end of the day, they're, they're unique. You know, that's what I really like about these book covers for Outlander. They're just unique they're themselves. They're not relying on flashiness at all. Um, it is. It's just simply you, you need to just read the synopsis and, and you're hooked or you're not hooked or whatever, you know. Um, so yeah, I just these covers are just interesting. You know, they sometimes don't particularly really mean much of any thing. Um, sometimes I do, you know, if some of the covers, when you look at them, they do kind of connect to something in the books. Um, but yeah, I just the simplicity. It just goes to show you that sometimes the less 
the better when it comes to a historical fiction cover. Next up, The Last American Vampire by Seth Graham Smith. You guys, I just really freaking love this this book right here. Um, this is actually book two in the Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter series. Um, I love Ab Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter, that book. I was just, my mind was blown with that book, you guys. It might be silly, but I loved it. And so yeah, The Last American Vampire is like a follow-up to that, focusing on the vampire, the main vampire character in that first book that Abraham Lincoln is like friends with. <laughs> This me talking about it is not doing it justice. You're probably sitting here thinking, "What?" <laughs> what I love about this cover, I, I just feel like it says it all. You this because this image, this is a very very classic photo um, in American history. Because I think this is, I think they took this in New York City. This photo I think was taken in New York City, and it's just a very iconic popular photo of that time after kind of that announcement that the that World War II is over. But yeah, the, the photo has been manipulated because um, it, it's still in black and white, but what's being thrown out there that's catching your eye is uh, the blood and whatnot. Because um, yeah, the photo, normally they are kissing, correct? They are normally kissing, but yeah, it looks like he's biting her neck in this photo. So immediately you get vibes of, okay, a historical fiction book, but with vampires. <laughs> Um, I do. I love this color. This cover, uh, the, the color. You, you know, using that classic photo, the black and white, that spark of red, the blood, genius, brilliant, and yeah, I, I personally really like this book because it's about a, a vampire, him telling his story through through the decades and all the history he's witnessed and whatnot. Uh, it's hard to describe this book, you guys. You just got to read it. <laughs> Next up, See What I Have Done by Sarah Schmidt. And this cover, this is a pretty horrifying cover because it looks like it's like a decapitated pigeon head. That's what it looks like to me anyway. Um, this cover, it, it because of the pigeon head on here, I was like, what the hell? So that immediately kind of drew me in. I picked it up and lo and behold, it's a book about Lizzie Borden, you guys. <laughs> genius. Uh, that That's a good uh, cover for marketing purposes, I feel like, because you're, you're instantly like, okay, what's up with this pigeon head? And it does, it has something to do with Lizzie Borden. If you don't know anything about Lizzie Borden, um, back in 1892 in, in, in Massachusetts, I believe it was, uh, Lizzie Borden uh, took an axe to her, 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 her father and her stepmother, maybe, because uh, she she was deemed not guilty, you guys. Uh, but a lot of people still think she probably did do it. <laughs> Who else did it? So yeah, this book, this historical fiction book, is about Lizzie Borden, a retelling uh, of the events, um, kind of Sarah Schmidt's interpretation of what went down that day in, in 1892. And there, there is a moment in this book, because there's always been speculation, I had to do some research on this, if this because it, this is kind of seen as a bit of fiction, um, that Lizzie Borden really did have a little coop of um, pigeons, historically. Um, and a lot of people kind of theorize that she might have murdered her father because he went and killed all of her pigeons. But there's no proof of that, that that was her motivation, obviously. That because her dad killed all of her pigeons, she murdered him because of that. There's no um, proof of that. So that's kind of what this pigeon on the cover is, because there is a moment in this book, Sarah Schmidt, that's kind of her theorizing, that her theory is because her dad killed all of her, her pigeons, she killed them. So yeah, the pigeon is perfect on here. Next up, The Lifeboat by Charlotte Rogan. And once again, another rather simplistic cover. A, a little bit more going on on it compared to like Outlander, for instance. But um, I, once again, the colors on here, the, the, the various shades of blue, um, and these, I, I guess they're birds on here. And all you see is just this ocean and these birds. Um, so yeah, what you need to know about the lifeboat. This takes place in the summer of 1914. And a young woman is on an elegant ocean liner with her, her new husband. And the, the, the ocean liner sinks, you guys. And you gotta think, this is 1914 couple years after the sinking of the Titanic. Um, so this this ocean liner sinks, and like the title suggests, the lifeboat, 
This is about this young woman and this other group of survivors. They are all on this lifeboat stuck at sea and it's a story of survival of the fittest essentially. Um, just the capabilities of people you know when they're under strain and under the elements. I freaking love this book you guys. It was it was pretty amazing and considering the setting, the setting is only on the ocean in this lifeboat. That's it. Um, this was still a very engaging, compelling story I found like. And yeah, the the, uh, the cover really drew me in. I love the coloring of the, the, the shades of blue, like I said, and these birds, and yeah, the ocean. And the cover, I, I think the cover really speaks to kind of the themes of this book, you know, about survival and about isolation, because there's nothing else on this cover. And the last unique cover is The King at the Edge of the World by Arthur Phillips. This cover, you guys, look at it. The, the, the title is in bold red across the entire damn book, and then you got this monkey with a crown on its head right there, dead center. Genius. I love it. Uh, uh, you immediately kind of know this has something to do with historical fiction. The book is called The King at the Edge of the World, so it's kind of like, okay, something with his, with history. And then, yeah, this monkey with a crown on its head. So, of course, I was like, okay, what's this book about? I pick it up, and the synopsis has to do that, you know, Queen Elizabeth I is, she's kind of slowly dying. There, there needs to be a successor to the throne, essentially, and that's where, um, King James the Sixth of Scotland comes into play, and it's up to some of the Queen's spy masters to figure out, hey, we need to know the the religious politics of King James the Sixth, because is he a Protestant or is he a Catholic? It's kind of important that we know, because yeah, this is a very tumultuous time period, you know, with the Catholics and the Protestants, a lot of a lot of feuding and warring going on because of religion, um, so. Um, a, a, a Muslim man, a character in the book, he's, a, he's like a doctor, he's sent off to the court of King James VI in Scotland, and it's up to him to figure out the religious politics, essentially. Uh, is James Catholic? Is he Protestant? And, um, King James, in the book, he does receive the gift of a monkey, um, so it's kind of perfect that this monkey is on here. So yeah, I just like this cover. This was such a unique cover. Like I said, bold colors, the title taking up the whole damn book. And yeah, this monkey with the crown. I, I, I don't know, just, just really clever, I feel like. You know, like I said, there's so many historical fiction books. They're all kind of the same, predictable. And it's like, this book came out and it was like, whoa, bam, in your face. Look at this cover. I like it. So, you guys, that is it for this video. Talking about unique historical fiction covers. I don't know if anybody else is kind of interested in that. Because, I mean, covers, covers are a big deal to me. Uh, covers can sometimes make or break a book. I mean, you know, never judge a book by its cover. But... You know, a lot of times when I'm browsing through hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of books, you know, I'm specifically trying to look for, you know, the genre that I like. I like historical fiction. So you do need to be creative and clever with your, your covers sometimes to really appeal to readers, you know. And I think all these covers appeal to me personally because it's like I'm looking for historical fiction. Hey, this book looks historical fiction. Let me read the synopsis and see if it really is. So, yeah, you guys, my question to you, what covers in the historical fiction genre stand out to you? What 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 have you noticed as far as like the tropes when it comes to cover covers within the genre? Cuz yeah, there's a lot that are very similar. Uh, and yeah, what covers have stood out to you and whatnot? So, that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you like this video, you may like these other videos. Bye guys.